Welcome to the 10-Minute Treasure. My name is Jeff Pospisil. So one of the things I've noticed recently is that there's been a big turnover in the people caring for the, the finances in a church or a nonprofit. And so I'm going to cover something that might seem basic to some of you that have been doing this for years and years and years. But for some of us, it might be brand new. And that's how do we care for and record a deposit, whether it's a church offering or just uh, what you're getting through the mailbox for your nonprofit. So I'm going to start off, by the way, um, I'm going to put a link to this form. It's just a little offering report form, and it just allows you, I actually have two different versions of this, but one is just a very basic one, counting the, the amount of money as well as the uh, amount for checks. And then I have one that's a little bit more detailed in case your church has a number of special offerings as well. But uh, if whenever I want to repeat this, I think I say this in the rest of the video. But whenever you are counting cash, you need at least two people not in the same household. So whenever you're counting cash, you need at least two people not in the same household. That is not as important if all you receive is checks. But whenever you're counting cash, I'm saying it for the third time, you need at least two people not from the same household. All right, so let's get into it. All right, so... What I like to do is I like to work on my stuff in batches. I don't like to do things as they come in. I like to set aside a certain time to do um, all I need to do in a proper way. That way you can get into a rhythm. So for my deposits, so if I was with the church, it would probably be on Monday morning. I would have had the, the money, the offering locked up, and then me and one other person would, would count it. Um, because there's going to be cash. In, with this nonprofit, the Upper Midwest GMC, we don't have cash. We receive checks by mail. So I don't have to really worry about that. Um, so the process is going to be a little bit different, but, but similar at least. So for me, I'd open up the mail. I would sort out all my checks into where, um, where the donor wants to designate it. So if somebody wants to give to the general fund and somebody wants to give new churches, I would just set up uh, two different piles and then as I'm going I'm gonna be stamping them so I would pick up one of these they're only like 10 bucks so I got this off of Amazon 10 bucks I'll put all right so I have Judy's 10 key open on my computer and again this is this just replaces one of those traditional adding machines that gives you a tape and I like it because I like to see the history and I'll put a link in the in the description to where you can buy it. It's like 20 bucks. So well worth your money. I've had this for 20 plus years. Uh, always enjoyed it. So this one's pretty easy. I wouldn't even need an adding machine if I, <laughs> I really wouldn't need an adding machine. It's seven checks for $100. So, and actually if I had the volume up on this, you would hear it makes the chunk, ch chunk, ch chunk sound from the, like a 10 key normally makes. And then here's my total. And if I had a lot of checks and I didn't want to fill out a deposit slip uh, or also for my cash, I could do the same thing for my cash. But if I didn't want to fill out a deposit slip, I could just print this. And I know this is a little bit small, but I could print this, attach it to the, the deposit slip, and I, that way I wouldn't have to fill it out. I just have to fill out the total. And the other thing that this does help is it very double checks you. So when I... Um, so when I go to make the deposit or when I go to enter this into my donor, my donor management system, which I'll show you in a little bit, it, it just double checks everything. So once I get the total and especially if you have cash and checks, what I would normally do is I would have, uh, I, I would probably print this out and have the counters sign it to verify this is how much we have. This is how much cash we have. This is how much we have in checks. So then I would actually be able to hand this off to whoever's recording the donations. And in my case, I'm the one that's recording the donations. I used to use QuickBooks Online for, for quite some time. And there you don't have, you would just have the checks in front of you and you go through them one by one and enter a sales receipt. And that ends up working pretty slick. And then you could just watch for that deposit to go through your online banking, and then it'll automatically match up all those sales receipts to your deposit. Um, but now we've just switched over to, to Planning Center. And I think this is pretty common is that they'll have you build batches. Most, I, I think I've seen that in most other 
uh, donation software is that you'll build a batch. And I already have a batch going, and this is for the fourth week of October. One of the things that they, they let you do is they let you set batch defaults. So you can, so if I knew I had most of them for the general offering, I would go ahead and I would select my fund general. Uh, when did I receive it? Normally that would be Sunday for a church, but in my case, I just knew I was going to make the deposit on October 31st, uh, last day of the month. Uh, they're going to be by check. And if I knew what the check date would be, I could also choose that. But in my case, since they're coming in by mail, I really didn't know. And then I also have um, labels. I use labels to, to mark some special offerings. And this most these $100 checks happen to be for ordination. So I'm going to go back. And when I'm looking at this, oops, I just, yeah, let's get rid of that. So what I would do normally is I have a check from, it's the Kimball Protestant Church, and they're not in my donor database. So I would go ahead and add them. Kimball Protestant Parish. Uh, I'm dealing with a lot of churches and some individuals, so that's one of the pains. I always like to also, by the way, enter in as much data as I can. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this while I enter in their address. Nothing secretive about their address. I just didn't think you needed to watch me enter it. So it's for $100. And I received it actually today is when it came in the mail. I have a check number. And I have a check date. And so I just like having that in there. That way, if a donor um, is wondering when you received it or, or, or any of the details, it's just easier to find it. The more information you capture, the better. And then I can hit next donation and it just, it, it captured that and it's ready to go. And then once I'm done with this batch, and I think I am done with the batch. By the way, it shows me $700. Like I said, I, that was what my tape gave me as well. Um, it's all for ordination. So that's the other breakdown piece. Then what I would do is I would commit the batch. And it's saying, are you sure you want to commit um, these seven donations? And, I, and again, it's seven donations for $100 a piece. Seven, so that all looks good. All right, now it's committed. It's down in my list here. So it's right down there. And one of the things I could do for support then is I could go ahead, and this is my week four batch, I could go ahead and right click, and I can go ahead and click print. And then I have all my support. So it'll tell me the $700. I know this is really small, but it'll go ahead and show me this $700 and what it's for. And so that'll match up with the deposit amount. And that would be what I would bring over to my accounting system. Again, if you're using QuickBooks online, then it already um, you already have the total. It's going to add up all those seven $100 sales receipts into one deposit. But this is how you would bring that um, aggregate information into QuickBooks online. There's no need to do duplicate processing. Just leave all the details in Planning Center or whatever your donation platform is and um, just bring over the, the financial summary to QuickBooks then. All right, so we've counted our deposit, we've recorded it, and the last thing we need to do is actually drop it off. So if you have one of those scanning machines where it automatically deposits, that's pretty slick, but I don't. Um, I have, if you don't have one of these, get a bank bag. I mean, they're, they're cheap, you can get them at Walmart or any of these office supplies places. So I'm just going to go ahead and fill in the, the total in my deposit slip, include my tape for printing it out, throw it in this bag, and uh, depending on what you have worked out with your bank, just talk with your bank. Um, if they don't mind you throwing this in the night deposit box as soon as you get it uh, counted or dropping it off there, that way you don't have to wait for them to do the whole deposit, sweet. And then you can swing back and get the receipt sometime later. Um, other than that, I think that's all I got. All right, hopefully that was a help to you. Like I said, I will leave a link to those offering counting reports. 
as well as the planning center. And I can't remember what else I had. Judy's 10 key. That was the other one. Um, if you ever have any ideas for future videos or that you'd want to learn more about, go ahead and message me. You can find me on Facebook or YouTube or on my website, which the link is on one side or the other. I can't remember. Anyway, I will see you next time. God bless.